and this is lesson 5-5, five, five, and it's finding equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. You can start on page 319 of your book. If you want to pause the video and go to page 319, that'd probably be a good idea. Okay? There are two major things you're going to be, you're going to need to be able to do in this section to, to be successful in section 5-5. Five, five. And the first one is if I give you an equation, I need you to write a new equation that would represent a line parallel to the given one through a specific point. And that's a mouthful. I think when we actually work through that, it will make a lot more sense than me trying to read that to you. And then the second major thing you'll need to do is do the exact same thing as I have in step one. But instead of writing a new equation of a parallel line, I want a new equation with a line that would be perpendicular to the given line through a specific point. So those are the two major things you'll need to do. And you can see we're finding equations for parallel and perpendicular lines. You can see in the name, there's the two major things we have to do. Here's the major thing number one, write an equation for a parallel line, and major thing number two that you see listed here. Okay? Now, Parallel lines. Let's kind of review some important things about parallel lines. What important fact do parallel lines have? And, and what I would want screaming in your head right now is that parallel lines have the same slope. This is a key point for today. All right. If you look at the top of page 319, actually, they talk about a word here that I'm going to quickly um, go through. Uh, converse. And this word you can put in your notes. I can ask a question about this on my, uh, my video audit tomorrow. Converse is a term that means it, you take your conditional statement. Uh, let me write this better than this, though. You reverse the hypothesis and conclusion of your conditional statement. A converse statement is when you reverse the hypothesis and conclusion in a conditional statement. And let's go through a conditional statement, what that is again, because some of us might not remember. We, did, we talked about conditional statements earlier in the year and hypothesis and conclusion. Let me make up an easy conditional statement that would be true. Um, if you are a freshman, if you are a freshman at Frankenmuth High School, then you have first lunch. Okay. Remember, this is called a conditional statement. Now, do you remember from earlier in the year? I'll underline this in green. The hypothesis is here. That's the hypothesis and the conclusion. I'll just do this in red. It's not wrong. I'm just doing it in a different color. This is the conclusion. Now, converse, and you'll use this in geometry class a lot, converse is when you take this conditional statement and reverse it. Uh, you reverse the hypothesis and conclusion. So let's see, that this statement was a true statement. Let's see if we reverse it if it's true. And here would be the reverse or the converse of the statement. If you have first lunch, if you have first lunch, then you are a freshman. So the question is, is that true? And obviously, no, it's not. There is, uh, there is sophomores also in first lunch. So just because you have first lunch doesn't make you a freshman. So the converse of a conditional statement is not always true. However, for parallel lines and slopes, the converse is true. If you have parallel lines, then we must have the same slope. The converse is also true. If you have the same slope, then the lines must be parallel. So parallel lines and, and slopes are the same slope are hand in hand. If you have parallel lines, the slopes must be the same. If slopes are the same, then the lines must be parallel. Both those statements, uh, the conditional statement and its converse, would be true, and we're going to use that today. 
All right, so let's look at how do we write a line parallel to a given line through a given point. And we can go right to the homework right now. Go to problem number six on page 322. You might want to pause the video. Go to page 322 right now. The directions are write an equation of the line that passes through the given point and is parallel to the given line. So here's the first thing. Here's my given line. I want a new line parallel to this line. So if you look, the original line has a slope of 5. So the new line, since it's parallel, it also must have a slope of 5. And you can see right here that I wrote 5 in for m. My new line must have the same slope as the old line. They are parallel. It told me in the directions. Okay, now they gave me a point. Negative 1, 2. I've got to find out the value of b. So all I need to do is take negative 1 and plug it in for x. Take 2 and plug it in for y and solve for b. Well, if I plug in negative 1 for x and 2 for y, you can see I get 2 equals negative 5 plus b. I can add 5 to each side. b is 7. That means my equation would be y equals 5x plus 7. Just so you're following where I'm getting this from, there's my slope of 5. And there's my y-intercept of 7. I just wrote those in. There's my equation. This is the equation of the line that is parallel to the given line, and it went through the point negative 1, 2. Let's go to number 7. Now, sometimes you've got to be real careful about this because the book will get tricky. They gave you the line negative 6x plus y equals 7. So let me just quickly do this in black because this is a common mistake. I, mean, I meant to say red. Here's a common mistake. I'll have a lot of people... Uh, that will say, oh, the slope's negative 6. Right here, there's the slope. It's right here. And that is incorrect. Now, I wrote a little note off to the side. Warning, is this in slope-intercept form? And the answer is obviously no, it's not. This is not in slope-intercept form. I can't just say the slope's negative 6 right now. I've got to rewrite this in slope-intercept form before I can get the slope. So let me do that. I'll add 6x to each side. That gives me y on the left. Let me cross these out. And I have 6x minus 1 or plus negative 1 on the right. There is slope-intercept form. So now I know that my new line must have a slope of 6. You see how it would have been a mistake to just say my new line has a slope of negative 6. And now the point they gave me in question 7, they gave me the point 1, 7. So now I'm going to take 1, plug it in for x. I'll take 7, and I'll plug that in for y. And I have 7 equals 6 times 1 plus b. And that's 7 equals 6 plus b. And if I quickly take away 6 from each side, you can see I'm getting b equals 1. So my slope, let me underline it, my slope had to be the 6, had to be the 6, and my y-intercept's the 1, and that's why I have y equals 6x plus 1 for my equation. I just wrote an equation of a line that's parallel to the given line through the point 1, 7. Okay, next thing. Look on page 320. Let's talk about perpendicular lines. They give you a picture at the top of page 320. You, I would definitely stop the video and go to page 320 right now. Look at this picture. The first picture, it shows me a line that has a slope of negative 3 halves. You can see how they counted squares to get from one point to the next. They went down 3 right to negative 3 halves. Now remember, perpendicular lines are lines that intersect and form a right angle. So you notice they drew a second line in the next picture off to the right on the top of page 320 that's perpendicular to the first line. It's at a right angle. Now let's look carefully at the slope of this second line. It's written in green. And the slope of the second line, you can see they rise 2 and run 3. Now, these lines are perpendicular. The blue line, which had the slope of negative 3 halves, and the green line, which had the slope of 2 thirds. Now, I want you to carefully look at these lines. 
and these slopes. The slope again of the first line is negative 3 halves. The slope of the line perpendicular to that was 2 thirds. Well, do you notice if you take the first slope and you flip it over and change the sign, you have the line perpendicular to its slope. That's what you have to do to find the slopes of perpendicular lines. If you take the known slope, you flip it and change the sign, which I maybe shouldn't say it that way. Flipping and changing the sign, I could say it has negative reciprocal, the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. I guess would be the math teacher way of saying it, even though you can think of it as flipping the, flipping the fraction and changing the sign. That's called a negative reciprocal. That's what you have to do to change one slope to a slope perpendicular to it. If you look on, on page 320, there's a key concept box, which is what we just talked about here. If two non-vertical lines in the same plane have slopes that are negative reciprocals, then the lines are perpendicular. So these slopes are giving me perpendicular lines. Or if two non-vertical lines in the same plane are perpendicular, then their slopes are negative reciprocals. So whenever you have perpendicular lines, you can, you can say to yourself, if I have a slope and I take its negative reciprocal, that would be the, the slope of the line perpendicular to the given line. Now, how are we going to use that? If you look at number 19, they want me to write an equation of a line that passes through the given point and it's perpendicular to the given line. Okay, so in number 19, here's the given line, y equals 3x minus 12. I want to write a line perpendicular to this line. So the first thing i got to do is take this slope, which is 3, and I have to take the reciprocal of 3 and put a negative in front of it. Well, I just did right here. There's the slope of a line perpendicular to 3, perpendicular to the line of a slope of 3. It's negative one-third. And now I've got to take my given point, which in number 19 was negative 9, 2, and I plug in negative 9 for x and 2 for y, and I solve for b. So I get 2 equals, that's 3 plus b. I take away 3 from each side, and b is negative 1. That means my new line must have a slope of negative 1 third, which is the negative reciprocal of 3, and my y-intercept was negative 1, and I just wrote that in my equation. I guess if I wanted to, I actually could have wrote y equals negative 1 third x minus 1, and that'd probably be the best way. Maybe I should put a little star next to that. It'd probably be the best way of writing that, even though what I have here is correct. Okay? So perpendicular lines, the slopes of perpendicular lines must be negative reciprocals of each other. Parallel lines are the same slope, Perpendicular lines are slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. Here's another problem. Number 23, they gave me the line y equals 4 third x plus 6, and I want to write a line that is perpendicular to this one. So the first step is to take the slope 4 thirds, and I'm going to write the negative reciprocal of it, negative 3 fourths. I'm now going to plug in negative 4 for x and negative 1 for y. And when I simplify and solve, I have negative 1 on the left. When I multiply these together, I'm going to get positive 3 plus b. I take away 3 from each side. b is negative 4. And so my new equation would be y equals negative 3 quarter x plus negative 4. So there's my slope, negative 3 quarter. Here's my y-intercept, negative 4. Actually, I guess the best way of writing that probably would actually be y equals negative 3 quarter x minus 4. That'd probably be the best way. I'm just going to put best next to there. Okay, probably the best way to write that one. All right? Questions there? Let's go and just do a couple more here. If you go to question number 8, um, just going to bounce around. They want me to write an equation of a line parallel to this. So again, remember, be careful. This is not in slope-intercept form. I've got to write it in slope-intercept form first. So I'll divide by 3, which gives me 
this line. Y equals one-third X minus four. That's my given line. Remember, you got to have a line in slope intercept form before we can tell what the slope is. Now, my new line then would have a slope of a third, and since they want me to put this line through the point 18, 2, I'm going to plug in 18 for X, I'll plug in 2 for Y, and one-third of 18 is 6, so I have 2 equals 6 plus B, and when I take away 6 from each side, let me do that. See, I'm doing that here. I'm getting B equals negative 4, so my equation, my final equation, I put FE for final equation, I guess. My final equation would be Y equals, and I didn't write this very well, let me write it up again. I would have y equals one-third x, there's my slope of a third, minus four. That would be my final equation. Let's look at 32. In 32, it says a hockey puck leaves the blade of a hockey stick, bounces off a wall, and travels in a new direction as shown. Write an equation that models the path of the puck from the blade of the hockey stick to the wall. So if you look, um, here's the blade of the stick. It's at the point negative four, zero. I'm going to put this is where we start. The blade starts here. And the puck hits the wall at zero, eight. I want to write an equation that models the path of the puck from the blade to the wall. Okay? Well, that's easy enough. Um, I got to get the slope first. Remember, this is a linear equation. I need I got to get the slope first. Let's get the slope. Um, I'm rising 8 and I'm running 4. Slope is 2 and my y intercept is 0 8. So there's my equation for part A. Slope was 2 and you can see in the picture the y intercept is 8 or 0 8 tells me the y intercept is 8. There's my there's my line, or there's the equation of the line from the puck hitting the stick and then up to the wall. Now, it says it bounces off the wall and travels in a new direction. So let's get the equation of that. It says write an equation that models the path of the puck after it bounces off the wall. So let's try that. Here's my new equation. Um, my new equation would be my the puck hits the wall at 0, 8, and it goes to the point negative 4, 16. So I got to first of all get my slope. So you can see we're dropping 8 and running 4. The slope is negative 2. And my y-intercept is still 8. You can see that here. There's my new equation. Now the question is, does the path of the puck form a right angle explain? Well, let's check. If it's at a right angle, that means the lines are perpendicular. Is this slope here, let me underline in blue, is this slope and this slope indicating lines that are perpendicular? In other words, are these slopes negative reciprocals of each other? And the answer obviously is no, it's not. Okay, these, are, these lines are not negative reciprocals, or these slopes are not negative reciprocals. These lines are not, not, they're not perpendicular lines. Okay, and again, the reason is, is because the slopes are not negative reciprocals of each other. Now, if this slope was negative one-half, then yes, these lines would have been perpendicular because when you take two and you reciprocal and negative, that's negative half. So these are not perpendicular lines for that reason. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here. We went through, I think, fairly well on what uh, parallel and perpendicular lines are, how we write equations in each case um, if we're given an equation and a point.